In the book of Joel in the Old Testament we read, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And this quotation is again repeated in the Acts of the Apostles. Now sometimes it is young men, very young men, even little boys who dream dreams. And yesterday I read of a seven-year-old boy's remarkable set of dreams that started on April the 14th concerning the coronavirus. Of his first dream, he says, I saw this huge green plant which had a crown on its head and it was squeezing the earth. The more it squeezed the earth, the more hands and tentacles it grew. Then out of nowhere, a lion that had the body of a lamb appeared and it destroyed the plant and ripped it to pieces. Then a date appeared in my dream. This will end on April the 30th. Now what are we to make of that particular dream? This is a young boy aged seven. He describes the coronavirus as a plant with a crown on its head. Remarkably, the word corona comes from crown. The coronavirus has indeed a crown on its head. And that is why the scientists call this set of viruses coronaviruses. They have a crown on their head. Now, could a little boy of seven know that? Not impossible, though I think it's unlikely. Again, note the phrase, the more it squeezed the earth, the more hands and tentacles it developed. And that seemed to be the case as it spread all over the world, as it pressed down on everything. It was utterly unpredictable. One person could get it and be on the point of death immediately, even if they didn't have an underlying condition. Whereas another person could get it and not even know that he or she had it and spread it to everybody around. It just seemed to have hands and tentacles all over the place, even able to get into their nursing homes, which should have been possible to have kept as secure places. But then look at the phrase, a lion that had a body of a lamb appeared. Now we all know that Jesus is the Lamb of God. So it's quite possible for a seven-year-old to know Jesus as the Lamb of God. How many of you know that Jesus is described in the Bible as a lion? Would a seven-year-old boy know that Jesus is described in the Bible as a lion? In the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 5, we read, One of the 24 elders said to me, Stop weeping. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne, has won the victory. I believe that this little seven-year-old boy does come from an evangelical background. And evangelicals would be much better on the Bible than us Catholics. But yet, what are the chances of a seven-year-old boy, even in a Bible-believing family, where the Bible is read, what are the chances of him knowing that Jesus is described in it as the Lion of Judah? That is not the only place where God is described as a lion in the Bible. In Hosea chapter 5 verses 14 and following, For I am like a lion to Ephraim, and like a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear them to pieces. Now who is being torn to pieces in Hosea chapter 5? It's sinners that are being torn to pieces that God is like a lion tearing sinners to pieces. It's not a virus, it's a people. But yet, look at the wording of the little boy's dream. It destroyed the plant and ripped it to pieces. Notice the phrase, ripped it to pieces. Again, what are the chances of a seven-year-old boy being familiar with that phrase, ripped it to pieces, from the book of Hosea? It destroyed the plant and ripped it to pieces. Now just supposing, let us suppose for one second that because this little boy, he comes most likely from an evangelical background where they love the Bible, where they read the Bible regularly, 
and it is clear also that his family were praying against the virus, fasting against the virus. So what are the chances? Even supposing that the little boy is familiar with both phrases of Jesus being the Lamb of God and Jesus also being the Lion of Judah, what are the chances of him coming up with the image of a lion having the body of a lamb? Now that, that involves profound theology. A lion that has the body of a lamb. The spirit of a lion and the body and heart of a lamb. What are the chances of a seven-year-old boy coming up with that image? It seems to me that for this dream to have had a merely human origin, this little seven-year-old boy, would need number one to have been a biblical expert and number two a scientist. What are the chances of that? Now he names April the 30th as the date of the fulfilment of this dream. It's quite possible that that thought was in his mind. With dreams you can get a mixture of the divine and the human. He had that dream on April the 14th. Again on April the 15th and on April the 16th, the dream was repeated three nights in a row. There was just one slight difference. In each dream, the huge plant which represented the coronavirus became smaller, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. Again, there, it is possible that there's a very human element to that. That his dream on April the 14th represented his fears. And many young people are very fearful of this virus. And so it's appearing in many people's dreams. So that's possible. And it's possible that then on the 15th and the 16th, he's coming to terms with his fears. So there is the possibility of that human element to the dream. Then on April the 17th, the same dream, but with a significant change in it. He says, I heard, pray, pray, pray. Does that remind you of anything? Remember, this little boy comes from an evangelical background, as far as I know. He may not be familiar with Medjugorje, but yet here he is repeating the words of our Blessed Mother in Medjugorje. Pray, pray, pray. He says, I heard pray, 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 and the clouds broke apart. And I saw the green plant with the crown, but it was much smaller. It was trying to squeeze the earth, but couldn't because its hands and arms wouldn't grow. Then the lion lamb destroyed it again and ripped it to pieces as in the other dreams. And again I saw at the end of the dream, this will end April the 30th. So he had that further dream for three more consecutive nights. So the first dream was for three nights, then this dream was for three nights. So in the first dream, the coronavirus was growing hands and tentacles all over the place. And the more hands and tentacles it had, the greater it squeezed the earth. And then in the second set of dreams for three nights, the coronavirus was still there, but it had lost its hands, it had lost its tentacles. In other words, its power was being greatly reduced. Then on April the 20th, he had yet another dream, the seventh in the series of dreams. He says, I saw clouds break apart and I see the crowned green plant and it's smaller than it's been in all the other dreams. And for the first time in all the dreams, the earth was bigger than the crowned green plant. Then the lion lamb appears, but instead of ripping the crowned green plant to shreds, as it did in the other dreams, instead he threw it into a pit. Then I looked at the clouds and I saw April the 30th. Again, I suggest, that April the 30th could be a human element because that was set as the date that the restrictions then in force were up until. Note the phrase, he threw it into a pit. 
Now this again is a biblical image which we find in the prophet Jeremiah, though it's of sinners and not of the coronavirus that it's used in the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah 48, 44. Terror, pit, and snare await you, O dweller of Bov, declares the Lord God. And he who flees the panic will fall into the pit. And he who climbs out of the pit will be cut in the snare. Again, what are the chances of a seven-year-old boy being aware of this passage from the prophet Jeremiah? And again, the pit in the prophet Jeremiah is often seen as an image of hell, of sinners being thrown into hell. And this dream is implying that there's something evil in the coronavirus, that it deserves to be cast into hell, that there's a spiritual element, that we are dealing with spiritual warfare as well as medical and biological warfare. There is one other factor which led myself to believe that this particular dream could represent something of a word from heaven. As it happened, just immediately before I read this dream, I had been on a different website, the Spirit Daily website, and I had read on it how on the previous day, April the 29th, scientists claim to have found a potential drug that could come against the coronavirus. Dr. Anthony Fauci, he's the top expert in infectious diseases in America. And he says of this drug, what it has proven is that a drug can block this virus and so speed up people's recovery. Now clearly there is a long way to go yet before this drug is in regular use. But the very fact that it's coming is a sign of hope. As it happened, the very last item I read on Spirit Daily was this doctor's report. And then I switched over to Charisma News. And the very first thing I read on Charisma News was this little boy's dream. Now perhaps that's a major coincidence. Perhaps it's quite possible, but yet it just sort of spoke to me and said to me, there's something in this. And so I believe that this little boy's dream, I don't know his name, his father's name is Will Ford. I do believe there is in it a message for us from heaven. That if there is in it an encouragement for us, to get serious about praying, to unite with heaven in heaven's fight against this virus, to be heaven's heart here on earth. We have often heard it said that God has no hands but ours, no feet but ours. But also we are called to be his heart, to unite with heaven in prayer. Now I have seen that some people have absolutely discounted the role of prayer in the fight against this virus. In my next video, I will explain why they are wrong, totally wrong. But going back to the little boy's dream, I encourage you to renew your prayers that the Holy Spirit will come upon those seeking to come up with medical remedies that the Holy Spirit will inspire the scientists and the doctors and asking a special blessing for Dr. Anthony Fauci and the team surrounding him who claim to have found a drug that can stop this virus. I suspect it has only been tested in the lab yet. It most likely hasn't been tested on humans. But we pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. And we also pray for God's protection for our frontline workers, the doctors, the nurses, the healthcare workers. And so we pray, Lord, that your blessing, your protection will go out to them. Lord Jesus, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the doctors and the scientists who are trying to develop a vaccine. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the doctors and scientists who are trying to come up with medication to treat this problem. And we pray, Lord, 
that you will give us the spirit of prayer, that we will pray for disintention from the depths of our hearts in the words of Medjugorje, in the words of Little Boy's Dream. We will pray, pray, pray. And may your protection go out to every person watching this video. Your blessing go out to every person watching this video. And may your blessing and protection surround them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.